Hey YouTube, Danny here with Danny's Tech Channel. I recently did a video on Fractal Design's Meshify 2 Compact Case, and I did an entry level build in it that I wanted to use for future videos on a how to and upgrade series. Today's video, I wanna show you how to overclock your GPU. If you built a new computer and you had to reuse your graphics card or get a graphics card from a friend of yours to borrow until you can actually get a hold of one, this is for you because you can extract a little bit more performance out of the graphics card you're currently using by following these steps. So let's get into it. First thing I want to do is show you the programs that you're going to need. You only need two things, at least in my eyes. First thing you definitely need is MSI Afterburner. If you type it in under Google, MSI Afterburner, it's the first link on the page and it takes you right to MSI's website. This is how you control the GPU. You control your temperature limits, your core clocks, memory clocks, fan speeds, monitoring, everything can be done through Afterburner and it's kind of the gold standard when overclocking a GPU. You just go in here and hit download and then it's gonna start downloading it on its own and then you'll install it. Same thing with the Unigen benchmark. If you type in Unigen Heaven on Google search, you can actually click the first link in there and it takes you right to their page. You can see it says 2009. It is an older benchmark, but honestly, it still gets the job done. It stresses the GPU, it puts a lot of demand on it, and that's how you can get your results. This is to validate the results of your overclock. Once you get both of those files downloaded, you'll install them just like a normal program. Now, MSI Afterburner will actually install two things. It'll install the Afterburner itself, and it'll try to install the Riva Tuner statistics software. You need to install both of those because the, the Riva, Riva Tuner, however you say it, you have to have that to be able to monitor the GPU itself. Uh, you'll see in some of these videos, it actually has it up in the corner of the screen where it'll display and show you what you wanna see as far as temperatures go, speed, all that stuff. So let's open Afterburner, and then we'll also open Unigen Heaven. This is what they look like. They're pretty simple systems as how they run. I'll leave the benchmark one over here, and I'm actually just gonna show you the MSI Afterburner first. Afterburner's software has gone through a little bit of a change recently. It didn't used to look like this. It had a very uh, old school look to it, so they just revamped it and made it look a little bit more modern. The buttons still do the same thing and uh, it's still just as easy to use as it was before. Just a quick overview here, if you didn't catch the video where I built in this Fractal Design case, the hardware that's in it, you can check it out. I'll leave a link in the description or up above in the YouTube card. It has an ASUS GTX 1660 Super graphics card. It's the ROG Strix model. This comes with six gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. It has one eight pin power connector and it recommends a 450 watt power supply. Okay, so I wanna explain a quick walk around of Afterburner and then we'll get right into overclocking. Afterburner is really easy to understand once you know the basics of it. The very first thing I always do when I load up Afterburner is go into the settings and do my fan profiles. If you hit the little cog wheel on the left-hand side here, that's a typical settings menu, this is what's gonna come up. The first page really isn't that big of a deal. I already have it checked. The only things you'll have to do is unlock voltage control. These are unchecked when you first boot it up. So just check these three things. You're gonna unlock voltage control, voltage monitoring, and force constant voltage. Then you go down and hit apply. You'll go into the next tab at the top here, which is your fan settings. Starting up, it looks like this. You'll click Enable User Defined Software Automatic Fan Control. It's gonna give you a nice little graph. I already defined my graph. Yours might be a little bit more steep, a little bit more gradual. It depends on what you wanna do with it. I don't want my GPU going over 80 degrees, so I have my fan max out at 75C. It's up to you how you wanna do it. If you wanna model off of the design that I have here on mine, feel free, go ahead and copy it then you're just gonna hit apply because that's gonna set up an automatic fan profile. Next thing you need to enable, you need to go over to your on-screen display. It says toggle on-screen display. I set this up on F11, it's just a button that I like to use. You can set it up to whatever you want. This is how you'll turn on and off your actual on-screen display. You're gonna wanna be able to toggle that. So just set that, hit apply. 
Let's go into monitoring here. This is where you'll actually decide what is displayed on the corner of your screen for your benchmarking. These are the things that I like to look at. You, you may decide that you don't want to look at these things. It's up to you. I want to see my GPU temperature. So you click beside your GPU temperature here. You'll hit show an on-screen display. Then you're going to go to GPU usage, show an on-screen display. That's going to show the percentage of GPU that's actually being utilized. This is going to show the temperature in Celsius of the GPU that's being utilized. Now you can change it. You can override it and do Fahrenheit if you want to. Celsius is just the standard for everybody else in the world except America for some reason. Next thing I like to see is memory usage. Click that and then hit show an on-screen display. I like to do core clock, then memory clock. That's going to show your core clock for the GPU, your memory clock speed for the GPU. Then I scroll down and find CPU temperature. I show that. I go down and show CPU usage. I show that. And then all the way down to CPU clock, I like to show that. I like to show a little bit more data than most users will care about, but uh, it kind of helps me see some things and I'll explain that in, in a minute. And then down here for frame rate, now this is unchecked from the get-go, like see how it's grayed out there? You'll actually need to click this check mark and then click out here and show an on-screen display. This is how you see your frame rate, your active FPS that you're getting in the game or in whatever you're doing. And then I like to see my average as well. So make sure that's checked and then make sure show into screen display is uh, on-screen display and then hit apply. That's all you need to do in the settings portion. Hit OK, it's gonna close out of that. The walk around for this part, this is your core clock. Here is your memory clock. You can see they're both at zero. And then you've got power limit should be at 100 and temperature limit is gonna be whatever your graphics card manufacturer has it set to right out of the get go. Leave everything as it is, don't change anything else and it's gonna be automatic for this portion. Now you'll go over to your Unigen heaven. It's really basic settings. Now you're gonna to wanna to tax your GPU to be able to see the results that you're actually getting. What I set it to, I set it to high for my quality. I set my tessellation to moderate, and then I set my anti-aliasing to times four. Leave resolution at system. It'll use your display resolution size. So if it's 1920 by 1080, that's what it's gonna go with. If it's 4K, it's gonna do 4K and, and so on. And then you just hit run. It's gonna load up the game, I guess you could say. It's just the benchmark. And then it's gonna start playing through this video. Now's where it gets interesting. It's gonna run this video in a just giant continuous loop. It's putting stress on your GPU. You can see up here in the corner, I'll try to blow this up on the screen. This is all the stats that you're gonna to wanna to see. You can see my GPU is in green here. It's running at 53 Celsius. 99% utilization and it's it's boosting to 1920. It's jumping between 1920 and 1905. When I was running the actual benchmark, when I benchmarked it, 1905 was pretty consistent once it got up to temperature and that's what it runs out of the box. Now I did set my own custom fan profile, so it is keeping it a little lower temperature than I guess it would have. I guess I did mess with it a little bit. You can see memory here. This is the memory amount that it's using. It's in megabytes. So you're actually using, during this test, I'm using 1.2 gigabytes of memory. Now remember I have a six gig VRAM buffer, not even using, I'm using one sixth of that. Here's my memory clock, it's at 7,000 megahertz. Now underneath here, this is stuff that you might not have if you didn't check it. I like to see it, this is my CPU temperature, it's at 49C, my CPU utilization is at 9%. And then the speed is at 4,000 4, megahertz or four gigahertz. And then here's my RAM usage. So I'm at 3.5 gigs of RAM used in everything that I'm doing. And then here's my uh, FPS. It's showing 101 FPS roughly. Now to get your benchmark, at least in Unigen heaven, there's a button up here. If you hit F11, you can see the actual overlay goes away. So you can see behind it you'll wanna hit this benchmark button. Now it's actually running the test. You can see down in the lower corner here, scene one of 26, it actually goes through an entire suite of different sections on this, uh, this world that they've created, different light patterns, different textures, 
and it's, like I said, it's stressing the GPU. Now, if I hit F11 and bring this back up again, you can see this is what you wanna make sure of. You wanna make sure your GPU is at closest to 100% utilization as possible to make sure that you're stressing that and not your CPU. This shows you that I'm GPU bound. If my CPU utilization was at 20% and my GPU was down at 80 something percent, that means you have a bottleneck from your CPU. You need to upgrade your CPU to get better performance numbers. If you are GPU bound, you'll have a high number on your GPU here and a very low CPU utilization rating. So by me being 10% or less on my CPU, I am entirely GPU bound. That's where I see the results of my overclocking in this instance. When you go in here to MSI, this is really easy to do. The first thing that I want you to do is to take your power limit and increase it all the way up. See how mine goes all the way up to 120 and 89C? That's because my graphics card is allowed to go that high. They, they install that into the software. Your mileage may vary. You may only be able to go to 105. You may be able to go to 110. If you're running an OEM graphics card from like an HP or a Dell or something, you probably don't even have any leeway to go up there with. You have to increase your power limit in order to overclock your GPU. If you try to ask more from the GPU without giving it more power, you won't get anywhere. You won't get a big increase like I can on this graphics card. So by just sliding my power limit and my temperature limit, and they move as one. You can see when I slide one, both of them slide. That's because they're linked down here. You can actually dis disengage that and you could slide each one individually, but I recommend you just leave it together. That way there's no problems uh, for you as far as temperatures go. But just me sliding the slider all the way up, my initial baseline FPS, I did three runs on Unigen Heaven I got 111.4 FPS. That was without touching anything except the fan profile as, you know, as far as getting a little bit cooler temps. And my temperature was 62 Celsius. Now, just by sliding the power sliders up to 120%, I was able to achieve 117.8 FPS. That's a 5.7% increase just sliding the sliders to the right. Now, let's talk about increasing the core clock and the memory. The only thing I really recommend for you to increase is your core clock. I like to start at something simple. For this GPU, I knew it could handle 100 megahertz overclock on the core. So you just click in the block beside it. You can use the slider if you want, or you can just click the block and type in 100, enter. You can slide it all the way to 1000 if you want, but it doesn't matter because it's not going to take it. It accepted it, but it's just going to crash immediately, so it's not even worth it. You'll have to click the check mark to apply the settings that you just set, but once you do, everything's good to go. You can reload Unigen Heaven, you can run your test again, and you can see your results increase. Don't change any of the settings or anything because this is gonna give you a direct comparison from your baseline to what you, you know, overclock to. So you can see right away, my GPU increased to 2010 megahertz from 1905 before. Now I am gaining a little bit of temperature increase as well. As soon as I started increasing my, my GPU, these are the results I got from doing my overclock. Now I spent a quick five minute type of an overclock. I did 100 megahertz on the core and I got 121.3 average FPS across three runs again. That's an 8.9% increase over the initial baseline numbers. My temperature did increase as well. This is something you have to keep in mind. Your temperature will rise with you overclocking the GPU. I jumped up to 150 megahertz on the core clock and that brought me to 123.2 FPS, which is a 10.6% increase and brought my temperature up one degree to 68C. Not bad for a 150 megahertz two minute overclock. So that's something you can do at home. Very easy to do not very hard to slide some sliders and adjust a temperature limit or two. Uh, you just have to follow my quick tutorial there and you can be on your way to getting a 10% FPS increase over what your graphics card runs stock. 
Now I did spend time tweaking absolutely everything because I wanted to see what kind of numbers I could push out of this graphics card. The max numbers I got was 170 on the core and 600 on the memory. I didn't really get into memory specifically. I'll explain it right now. Think of memory timing, moving the memory clock up as like the fine tuning of your overclock. Once you get to your number, so mine was 160, and then I was able to start, so when I went to 170 on the core clock, it crashed. Don't worry about it, it's perfectly normal. That's where you'll find your numbers at. GPU overclocking in my eyes is a lot easier than CPU overclocking. When you go to run the test up, I set it to 170. The crash will just black screen or it'll flicker or something and then it'll kick you out of the program. That's just the game engine crashing or the, the benchmark crashing. Uh, it's it, Like I said, it's perfectly normal. It just crashes. Just hit escape or go up to quit up here and then quit the application if it starts doing it. Or it will just kick you out of the application altogether on its own. Don't worry about it. it happens to all of us. That's how you know you've reached the ceiling of your clock. So just bump your clock back down a little bit. I went to 160 and then you can start messing with the memory if you want to. I do it by uh, 250 megahertz increments. So I started at 250 and then I bumped my way up. So I made it all the way up to 600 and the results I got, I was really determined to hit that 130 FPS mark and I did it. So just test it out, try it as much as you can with your graphics card. It's a lot of fun to do things like this. And if you like to tinker and can't afford to buy new parts for your computer, this is one way that you can play around with things to get extra performance and it's totally free. Just a quick recap, like I said, the two programs you're gonna need are Unigen Heaven and MSI Afterburner. They're real easy to install. As I showed you, they're very easy to navigate and it's a cool way that you can learn more about your computer and kind of take control of it and get that free performance that you deserve. Now, is the increase worth it? It doesn't harm your components anymore. I have overclocked every graphics card I've gotten on my own personal computers just to see what they'll do. And then I'll dial them back to 100 or 150 megahertz on the core. And I run those every day. My 2080 Ti that I bought when the card came out is still running 150 megahertz overclock just fine. It creates a little bit more heat. It doesn't degrade the lifespan of the card enough to matter for you. You're gonna get rid of that card and get something new before that lifespan would reach its point anyways. Did you enjoy today's video? If you did, don't forget to smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and stick around and check out some of the follow-up videos to this if you really wanna learn how to do things with your computer, how to make upgrades, or just things like overclocking. And as I always say, I'm Danny with Danny's Tech Channel, and I'll see you in the next video.